Look, it needs to be said that faculty and staff salaries are not something that you, the students, should be worried about. Woo! It's beautiful that you do. And you need to be thanked for that. Yeah. You need to be thanked by the faculty for your concern. You need to be thanked by the staff. We thank you. You also need to be thanked for your concern by the administration and by the trustees. They may thank you. I will be curious to know if those thanks, should they be forthcoming, will feel sincere to you. One thing we do know is that it would be a huge relief to the trustees if you would just shut up and do your job of being students. We know that it would be a huge relief for the trustees and for the administration if the faculty would just shut up and do its job of being the faculty. And of course, of course, it would be a huge relief to you, to me, if the trustees and the administration would allow workers at the college to have a say in what their time, their labor, their care, their sacrifice is worth to the college. That's not the Oberlin we live in. That's not the only Oberlin we have. The Oberlin we live in is one where custodians and dining hall workers were fired for the sole reason that they had organized to have a say in their own value. The Oberlin we live in is one where a senior administrator has said that those custodians had to go because some of them made more than assistant professors. There's an obscenity in such a statement. And there is obscenity in any administration or regime or institution that accepts such an argument as valid, persuasive, and unremarkable. So I hope, I hope you agree with me that there is a particular obscenity, a grotesque obscenity, when the same trustees and administrators that fired these custodians style themselves as custodians of the college's future. I'd really like to know what arrogance, what superhuman powers of self-delusion allow someone to make such an argument. I would like to know what arrogance and what superhuman powers of self-delusion allow someone who makes such an argument to expect that he or she will be taken seriously. That is the Oberlin we live in the only Oberlin, the one we share.